Hello everyone and welcome to Electronic Technocrat. So this is episode number triple zero and this episode will be completely based on the series that is the C programming language series. So let's start our video. Oh wait, 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 hold on. I'm not alone right now. I've got a guest with me. You're correct. A guest with me throughout the whole series. Hey, you are there. Yes, Electronic Technocrat, I am up here, over here. Thanks a lot for giving me your YouTube online platform for sharing knowledge with hundreds, no, sorry, rather millions of students out there who are just like me, eager to learn basic and the most essential part of programming language, that is C programming language. Yes, you heard it right. I am over here to remove the fear of those thousands and millions of students who have fear of programming. I want to make sure that programming for them is easy and fun. So without further delay, let's get started to our video. So hello there and welcome to Electronic Technocrat. Yeah. Today sure. we are not alone. Standalone video is not today. Perfect. You got it right. There is no standalone video today. Today with us is our guest host appearance, or we can say a collaboration with Electronic Technocrat, and that collaboration would be Mrs. Saurabh Chare. Yes. Thanks That's a lot, Electronic Technocrat. Technocrat. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so so before I, yes, yes, of course. So let me just show you my intro. Uh, so my name is Saurabh Chauri and my skills in computer science are C programming and bash scripting. And so we will be talking a lot of C programming and how to program and write codes and that. And bash scripting is nothing. It's like shell scripting in which you write the source code and then execute in that in the shell itself. And additionally, I have interest in Unix-like operating systems, and I love to see how the kernel works, how the kernel manages all the services like process management, and then memory management, input, output, and of course the file systems. And I guess it will be a nice and lovely journey. Absolutely, it will be a very interesting journey. In fact, my first collaboration with you, it will be a fantastic journey. Yes, of course. So, from the behalf of my really intelligent and naive audience, I would like to have some question here with you. Yes, you of course. It? Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. So, without wasting any time, let's start our questionnaire. So, would you answer it to my questions? Yes, of course. Why not? Yeah. So, I have some basic questions that I will be asking you on the behalf of my brilliant audience. Oh, All right. Great. Yeah, <laughs> I like those audience because they are very supportive. Okay. So, very yes. first question that I will yeah. be asking to you would be: yes. Now, for example, I have seen many setups, just like Windows setup, or I have seen a Linux setup, or so many other platforms. Okay. Which operating system would you prefer using? Uh, basically, since I'm a programmer and I like to do a lot of programming, so the operating system which I mostly prefer is Unix-like operating system. So as you can see over here, I'm using Ubuntu. Let me show you guys which version of Ubuntu I'm using. I'm using the command neo-fetch to fetch the operating system information. And as you can see on the screen, I'm using Ubuntu 19.10 and it is running on 64-bit architecture. The kernel version is 5.3.0 and it's a generic kernel. So basically I'm using a Unix-like system and I would like to recommend audience as well to be using a Unix-like operating system. It could be any operating system. It doesn't has to be Ubuntu. It could be Kali Linux. It could be Linux Mint or Fedora and you name it. It could be anything, but it should be and must be Unix-like operating system. Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. the next question would be, which all tools and softwares are you going to use while developing and programming in throughout our series? Okay, so the tools I will be using are provided by GNU and they are known as GNU Toolchain. So, let me just skip over to the GNU Wikipedia page. So, as you can see on this Wikipedia web page, 
that the GNU toolchain is a broad collection of programming tools. Yes, it has lots many of software and debugging tools available inside the toolchain. And the most that we will be making use of is GNU Make. The GNU Make is nothing but an automation tool which will help us in compiling and building our source code. So you don't have to each time write those all lengthy uh, commands to just build your file. You can just automate that whole thing using GNU Make. And then we, the most important is the GCC compiler. It is JNU compiler collection and it provides all the kind of compilers needed to compile our source code into a machine executable file. And apart from that, it also provides basic standard C libraries and it is included in glibc. So it includes standard including headers and libraries and dynamic loaders. And the most important thing of the GNU toolchain is that it provides a debugger. And that debugger is known as GNU debugger or GDB. A GDB or a debugger is nothing but a system a software which helps in debugging the code so that at any instant in your code, you can just put up a breakpoint. And whenever that breakpoint is occurred, the machine will halt and tell you the current status of your code. So it is very helpful. And I will teach you guys how to use that. And apart from the GNU toolchain, which is already present, we will be using an external uh, program, which is used for memory management. So as you can see, I'm using Valgrind uh, for memory management. It not only tells only about the heap and stack, but also tells if the memory is leaking or not. Don't worry about it, guys. It might sound a bit technical, but I will explain you everything from heap collection to garbage collection to how you can free the memory blocks and how to prevent stack smashing and segmentation fall and whatnot. So don't worry about it. We will be seeing all this in the upcoming videos. So in my context, in this question, I would like to ask you, which text editor would you prefer to use? Yeah, so the text editor which I will be using is known as Vim. So let me show you guys which version of Vim I will be using. So it's Vim yeah. 8.1.1401. So this version of Vim is generally not available by default in any Unix-like operating system distribution. But don't worry about that as well. We will be seeing how to install it through a step-by-step -step process and it's really easy to do all that and you will be just up in within few videos oh i see so it's spelled as v i m am i yes, correct absolutely right it's spelled as v -I -M. thank you very much yeah thank you very much the next question and the last question basically for us today i won't bother you much about it i was wondering which kind of coding style do you use basically uh, the coding style which I mostly prefer is ANSIC and that stands for American National Standard Institute and they have given some rules and basic formats to follow to all the coders out there so that the code is standardized and that anybody else can read that code by having a look at it and don't worry about it as well I will be providing a reading assignment to all the audience yes assignment and it is just a 20 page assignment not a long one and you can have a glimpse of it I will show you over here. So as you can see on your screen, this is the uh, assignment which I am talking about and it's just 20 pages long and I will be providing the link as well. So you can put it up in the description, right? Electro electronic technology. Absolutely. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. The link in the description would be provided to every one of us so that everyone can access the link, solve the assignment, read the assignment, understand the assignment and also understand what we are trying to convey through this video. We are trying to make C programming language very easy for you folks to understand. And this is very, very simple. So don't take any pressure around it. The coding is very, very simple. And this guy, trust me, is gonna make it very easy. All right, so yes, move on I will to the try next level part. Best. Yes, I will try my level best. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. sure. Let's go on to the next part.